Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton, you've got 12 days until May and I'm going to help you succeed in your GCSE. This lesson, 5 tips for the day of the exam. With the way the GCSE courses used to work, students could sit the exams in year 10 and have a go at some of them then, and then if they didn't do so well on them, they could resit them in year 11. So by the end of year 11, most students would have already had a go at some exams in year 10. For most of you though, these exams will probably be the first proper external exams you've ever sat. And so it can be tricky knowing exactly what the etiquette is, exactly what you should be doing. So I just want to run down a few things which you need to be doing on the day of the exam. Firstly, of course, you want to be on time. You want to make sure you're there with time to spare. Quite often you'll have the opportunity to speak to your class teachers and they'll be able to give you a few last minute pointers or clear up any last minute questions. But at the very least, you want to make sure that when everyone's going into the exam hall, you're there. Sometimes though, that doesn't work out. Sometimes there can be things like roadworks which you didn't know about, which delay you. Under those circumstances, what you need to do is tell someone. Call your friends and tell them to tell teachers where you are. Call school as well. If you're not sure what school's number is, have a look on the website. You can probably load that up on your phone. And normally either down the bottom of the page or in a separate tab that says contact, you'll be able to find the school number. That'll be the number for the main switchboard and you can tell them. Let them know your name and that you've got an exam, which one it is, and ask them to pass the message on that you're trapped in roadworks or wherever you are and they will be able to get that message through to them. The exams normally start at a fixed time, but the school does have the opportunity for a little bit of leeway. Not a lot, but they can sometimes delay the start of those exams by a few minutes if you're just slightly delayed. I know you can sometimes feel a bit bad if you're running late and you don't want to let someone else know because you feel like you might get in trouble. Trust me, the school is far more interested in making sure you are in that exam and that they can start it with you in there than they are in nagging you about why you're late. Particularly if it's something which is beyond your control like roadworks, everyone knows these sorts of things happen. Now that doesn't mean that if you're three hours late because you decided to go shopping or spent the morning playing Call of Duty that anyone's going to be happy with you and it certainly doesn't mean under those circumstances that they are going to delay that exam for you. If you miss that exam because you were messing around because you didn't show up and you didn't let anyone know where you were and you were hugely late then that's it. That is your opportunity to sit that exam gone and you'll have to resit it again the next year which you'll be able to do at college but that will be more stuff for you to learn and it'll be more inconvenient for you to learn. So it's most important that you do try to get there on time, but if you can't for whatever reason, call, tell someone so they know where you are, they get an idea of how late you're going to be and they'll be able to hold things on for you, hopefully, if you're not too late. <laughs> Most of the halls where exams take place do have pretty good lines of sight to the clock, but there can be a couple of problems with that. Either you're a long way away from the front and you can't see the clock properly, or it's one of those halls, and I have seen a few of them like this, where there's pillars in there, and those pillars are in the way, and there's desks behind the pillars, and so your line of sight to the clock is blocked. If you're in either of those situations and you can't see the clock and you need to see the clock, and I suggest most of you do need to see the clock, then put your hand up. Let an invigilator know. Now, they're not always going to be able to reseat you, unfortunately, but under a lot of circumstances, there may well be spare desks in that hall. If you stick your hand up and let them know that you really need to see the clock because you're short-sighted or because something's in the way and ask if you could be moved to another desk, in most circumstances, they would be happy for you to do that. It would be fairly typical if once you find yourself sat at a desk where you can see the clock, it's the wobbly desk. There's always one in any exam hall and it can be a real pain because you either sit there and every time you write the things wobbling and making a noise or you spend the whole time concentrating on trying not to make the desk wobble and then you're focusing on that rather than the exam. There's a really simple solution. 
All you need to do if you've got the wobbly desk is raise your hand and ask an invigilator for a piece of paper. As soon as you get sat down, before you even open the exam paper, before anyone tells you you can start, put your hand up straight away if that desk is wobbly, ask for a piece of paper and then you'll be able to stick that under the leg of the desk so that it doesn't wobble anymore. Incidentally, while I was researching this series, I have seen a website which suggested taking a beer mat in. Really, really bad idea because beer mats have writing on them. I mean, they're perfect for stopping a desk wobbling, but they are not the perfect thing to be taking into an exam hall because it could be interpreted as cheating and you don't want that to happen. So, if it's the wobbly desk, stick that hand straight up, straight away, ask for a piece of paper and you can fold that up and stick it under the leg and stop your desk wobbling. It can be really tempting while you're sat in that exam to be watching what other people are doing, but actually this can be hugely off-putting. There's an extremely good chance that some people in that exam hall are going to finish before you. You know what? They've probably finished because they didn't know the answers and because they've run out of stuff to say because they didn't do their revision. Don't assume that they've finished because they're geniuses. And I've got to be honest, some of them will want you to think that and you won't find out until August whether or not they are actually geniuses. But don't assume that. Assume that they've finished because they don't know the answers. Focus on what you're doing. Don't worry about if anyone else has finished. Don't worry if you're the very last person to finish. Don't worry if as the time runs out, you are still writing and everyone else in that exam hall has finished. You focus on your work. This is your time and you do not need to worry about what anyone else is doing at all. <music> Lastly, don't write in the barcodes. Don't start colouring them in. It is not a colouring book. Those barcodes are there for an important reason. And the reason's pretty simple. A lot of exam boards now mark papers electronically. 50 years ago, examiners would get a stack of exam papers to work through, and they'd sit there marking an entire paper at a time. Nowadays, it's a bit more high tech. Your paper will often be scanned into a huge scanner, and then the questions will be separated out. An examiner will be much more likely to just be marking one question at a time, over and over and over again on dozens of papers. This makes their marking faster and more reliable, plus it cuts down on the cost of posting all those papers around for the exam board. So it's good for you and it's good for the exam board and it's good for the examiner. But how do they know which paper is which and where's it got to be sent? They've got barcodes. That's what they're for. So all those papers can be properly sorted and filed and scanned and routed automatically without any problems. If you write in the barcodes, you are significantly increasing the chances that something is going to go wrong in the process of marking your paper. It's hard to say exactly what, and the exam board will make every attempt to make sure that that doesn't happen, but better to not run the risk in the first place. So don't write in those barcodes, leave them pristine so that the machine which scans them can actually scan them. I hope that video really helped you. If it did, it really helps my channel when you like, subscribe and share these videos. Let people know I'm going to succeed in my GCSE. All the links and info for this video are in the description and please let me know what you thought in the comments or on Twitter at MrThorntonUK or use the hashtag SucceedInMyGCSE. There are loads more GCSE science videos on my channel too. Here's another one which YouTube thinks you might find useful. You can click my picture just here to subscribe, click down there to check how well you understood with the Snap Quiz website and app, and you can click just here to get my revision guides. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.